The Mignano Gap is a narrow valley squeezed between mountain masses, Mount Camino to the south and Mount Samucro to the north, on the side of which is built the town of San Pietro. Like a stopper in this bottleneck, Mount Lungo rises from the floor of this valley. Beyond Mount Lungo, there were further mountain barriers, including Mount Trocchio. Our offensive started with Operation Raincoat, code name for a thrust on the left of Mignano Gap at the Camino Hills. Late afternoon, 2nd December, 925 field pieces poured tons of shells into enemy positions. Backed by this strong artillery support, the 1st Special Service Force captured Mount La Defensa and Mount La Rematania. The 56th Division took Mount Camino. The 36th captured Mount Maggiore. By 10th December, Operation Raincoat was completed successfully. Troops of the 1st Italian Motorized Group moved into the Mignano area to join the 36th Division. This marked the first occasion of Italian soldiers fighting side by side with Americans. It was decided that Italian troops should strike to take Mount Lungo. A second Corps artillery barrage supported the effort. The Germans were too well entrenched on Mount Lungo. By noon, it was apparent that the Italian assault had failed. Losses were so excessive that further operations against Mount Lungo were postponed for the time being. Instead, we decided to take the town of San Pietro at the foot of the mountains. Now our artillery pounded and repounded the enemy defenses guarding San Pietro. Next day, the 504th paratroopers were sent out to secure the hills above San Pietro. Mules carried their weapons and ammunition up the steep slopes. On 15th December, a week after their first attempt, the 143rd Regiment again moved into position for an attack on the town. German planes came over to dive bomb our positions. Smoke screens were thrown up to conceal our movements. On the narrow, heavily mined road to San Pietro, 16 tanks under direct enemy observation led the way for the infantry assault. The lead tank, three hours later, reached the edge of San Pietro. Enemy shells fired on the tank, hitting closer and closer before knocking it out. At the end of the day, only four of the 16 tanks returned. Enemy decision to abandon San Pietro came after we'd won Mount Lungo. On 17th December, our lines moved into the town. From the hills above, the 504th parachute troops descended on San Pietro. No matter how hasty their retreat, the Germans never failed to leave their mines and booby traps in the rubble of a destroyed Italian town. Few prisoners were taken in the battle for San Pietro. The German withdrawal was well executed. It was a costly battle. The 143rd Regiment alone required 1,100 replacements. Many companies lost all their officers. Enlisted men led those battered units forward. This was the scene of three weeks of the bitterest fighting on the 5th Army front. For 17 days, the target for the heaviest artillery concentration of the Italian campaign. The people of San Pietro came out of the caves in which they had hidden for weeks. They found little of their belongings to salvage. Two days after the battle, General Eisenhower visited the San Pietro area for a conference with division commanders. From the hills above the town, the general could see our shells falling two miles northwest on the town of San Vittore, our next objective. In mud, rain, in cold, biting wind, our troops had driven the enemy from Mount Lungo, reaching the top by 16th December. This finally opened the way through the Mignano Gap. 
troops of the 142nd on the mountain were relieved by the 15th Infantry, 3rd Division. 